Yo, what's good everybody? So in season four, Minion Necromancer is getting insane buffs for the minions. So the summoner will be the, I would say the strongest and the best build for season four, mainly for the paid, which will be the end game. And the devs have said that tier 150 plus of the paid will be harder than Avatar of Zero tier 25, which was from second season. And that, that, that difficulty was absolutely crazy. Now it's going to be even, uh, even, uh, harder but anyways this build has very high defensives on top of very high damage as well and the main big change in scene 4 for minion is now your companions for necromancer barb sork and druid will scale 100 of your player stats so that right there is gonna make them absolutely crazy i think it's gonna be really busted so let's get straight into it i'll show you uh in the patch notes we got the companions here scaling for 100% from your stats. So that's why any build for well, minions is going to be really crazy. So I got the planner here. I'm going to go over the skills first. So first up, we got Reap. We don't really need basic skill. Uh, I mean, early on when leveling, we we're going to need that. So some of the damage reduction, which will also apply to your minions, is going to be handy. We're going to be using a Sever as our main ability as yourself as a player. So these are the, these are the skills. So here we have the skeletons, both mages and warriors. And if you have the max amount, you will just keep uptime on your priest to empower your minions for damage. You need to keep that in mind. There's a lot of people where they fail with minion builds. They were forgetting about this priest, but it does a lot. So keep that in mind. We, we got golem. I went with iron golem here for the stun and shockwave. If you go with golem mastery on amulet and golem mastery is exactly down here. It adds 25% for one point on top of Paragon board. Uh, it's going to do a, a, a lot of damage, a lot of damage. That's what nerfed, what was nerfed on PTR. You were able to get to plus 28 mastery to Golem, but even if you can have that only on Amulet, that's totally okay. Also, our source for Unstoppable. And then we got Army of the Dead. I tried to make this build uh, to have as much cooldown reduction as possible. So we are running something like Blood Orbs reversing cooldown of your ultimate skills. Uh, Blood Orbs are spawned by Kunzing and Corpse. And when we use Blood Mist, we uh, proc Corpse Explosion, which is a uh, corpse consuming. So uh, one of my favorite skills on uh, Necromancer, this provides an iframe, which means immunity frame. You're immune for three seconds. Uh, this is an amazing skill. Also heals you really crazy. And it will also leave a corpse behind on top of the corpse explosion here, uh, which is uh, actually right here. So, yeah, it also reduces the cooldown of Blood Mist. So, there is a lot of cooldown reduction on this character or on this class. There is this uh, new crafting, so called tempering. And as you can see, I picked Blood Mist cooldown reduction wherever I could. And then just summoning damage. You should focus on this as aspect or affix as the first one while leveling to pump everything into damage reduction. Sorry, into damage for summons for minions. And then we also have ultimate cooldown reduction here the three times. So it's 30% if you can get the max roll. And the blood miss is 40% overall. We got three, four, uh, oh, I, should, I think it was like right here. But I only picked one tempering because uh, on sacred items while leveling, you can put only one tempering. Ancestral, that's double, but I believe I saw it somewhere here. Maybe I'm tripping. Was it an offhand? Blood Mist. It was, yes, right here. This is the last one. So, yeah, you can get a lot of cooldown reduction. I love this one. For uh, for the Warriors, we are going with the additional Warrior because Sever here scales from minions. As you can see, the second upgrade. Sever deals extra damage for each minion active. And on top of that, we will have this aspect to increase our number for Warriors and Mages on top of that. So, I believe this will do a lot of damage as well. And for Mages, I'm going with Cold to apply cc or well, well cc and then also vulnerable that's the source because vulnerable increases the damage uh done to the target and why i pick cold mages is because of this glyph right here control so it's right up top i find it's extremely good because for five intelligence you get 10 percent damage increase and with this board that's that's a lot that's 140 percent increased damage from this board it's really crazy I'm a big fan. Anyways, back to the skill tree. This was just an overview. So Sever, our main ability. Now with Sever, we also will spawn Blight. That's why I've put uh, points into Blight, mainly for this passive. You'll deal more damage for, uh, with minions. Um, it's going to be spawned by this aspect. 
So we would try to focus on attack speed as well. So we can dish out that sever. And we also need some regeneration for essence. So if you don't need vulnerable, if you don't like vulnerable, you can totally go for essence here to get better like sustain for sever. But it is our spawn for blight. Next up, we got Blood Mist once again for the iframe, but also to proc Corpse Explosions to uh, spawn Blood Orb that reduces the cooldown of our ultimate skill. The passives here for your skeletons, very good stuff, 45%. We got a passive here, uh, the generating corpse, or sorry, consuming corpse will generate a sense once again, that's with Blood Mist. So, Blood Mist will give basically everything. It will heal, it will give us uh, a sense, and also 45 with some passive later on. We got Skeleton Mage here for the stats on your minions again. You should always, while leveling, you always focus on these passives whenever you uh, can unlock them. Then I would go for the for the curse here. Because not only they will the mobs will deal less damage to you. And now for endgame, we might be putting more points into it for more damage reduction, but for leveling, this is more than enough. This is a stun, but mainly this one. This is an insane amount of club reaction on top of that. So this will proc like crazy, even though it's like a hit. Lucky it or in general is not that high. But then we got movement speed for mobility. Uh, we kind of need mobility on, a, on Necromancer because we don't really have any gap closer. We got Death's Embrace. I really like this one. This is like a two stat in one node. Extra damage from Curse. Next up, we got movement speed. Once again, more mobility here. Uh, we're going to be spamming a darkness skills as in Sever and Blight. So we will have this proc uh, very often. Necrotic Car Carapace right here as well. When you form a corpse, you will fortify yourself, right? So that's with Blood Mist, right? Blood Mist uh, summons a corpse here. And uh, every uh, one second. So this is for three seconds, three corpses. Amazing stuff. You can see where I'm going with um, with this one. Inspiring Leader, they changed attack speed to crit chance even for minions. Now minions, uh, these stats like these are double ding dipping for minions. Which means your minions will get 12% from you and then on top of 18%, which is really good. I'm a big fan of that one. And then here, even more damage. So getting a passive on Amulet, either for Hellbent Commander or Golem Mastery, is going to be very important, depending which one I focus on. But uh, yeah, this one would be probably better. And since you need to play close to your minions, that's why I picked Blood Mist for the iframe, for just uh, survivability. That heals you, fortifies you, gives you Essence. Army of the Dead, pretty safe, pretty safe explanatory um, with the... Uh, Aspect on top of that, but it also raises your warriors and skelly mages if you don't have any corpses around. Which wouldn't be a problem with Blood Mist in our situation. And we have the aspect here for Army of the Dead. Your minions will deal up to 100% increased damage and they create this damage by 90%. That's straight up almost immortality right there on top of all the DR they scale from you, right? They take from you. And then attack speed. Now... Why I picked attack speed here, and also I picked attack speed on this weapon, is for one legendary node in Paragon. It's called Cult Leader. Minions deal increased damage for each 20% of attack speed. That is really, really crazy, right? That's 150% uh, damage increase for 100% attack speed. That's uh, that's really crazy. It's of course wild. I think minion necromancer will just go, will deal insane amount of damage, just insane numbers, right? That was the skill tree. The aspect, so now you will see what uh, I combined. More stats or like more summons here, thanks to Sever. We will go with damage reduction for Emidians, 20%. We got the Sever spawning Blight. We got Embalmer here to spawn Blood Orbs that will also later just reduce cooldown for Army of the Dead. If you don't like Army of the Dead, you could totally go with Bone Storm that is applied to your Golem as well. And the Bone Storm also increases your crit chance and damage reduction here. So your minions will scale from this as well. So if you don't like Army of the Dead, you can go with this one. Boots, we got it's one of the only sources for unstoppables. So we are rocking a metamorph on the boots. For this one, I recommend on the boots implicit, probably since they buffed it, probably attacks uh, reduce evades cooldown because this one basically got doubled. It, before it was 0.75 seconds, now it's one and a half. Or you could go with max if it charges. We will see what will be better. On the weapon, I'm running one handed and an off hand. It's going to be shield. I will explain why. So here we have attack speed, right? For minions. And off hand is going to be a shield for one reason. On a shield, you get main hand weapon damage. And your, your minions do scale from main hand weapon damage. Obviously, 200 would be better for that, but I like to have more aspects, so 
That's why I went with this, and I like shield much more for this single reason. We go with the mist here. That reduces the cooldown of uh, well, bot mist basically, but also to trigger corpse explosion to more a link up on the passives in the skill tree I just talked about. We get the armor of the dead aspect here, the obvious and reanimation for minion damage increase. Uh, I like to put this on amulet because it's amplified by 50%. So there's these ready the aspects on the gems. I go with vulnerable on the weapon, or we could go for crit damage, but minions have always scaled 100% from vulnerable damage, even before all these changes, season since season one and two and whatever. So I pick this one. On armor, I definitely want to go with max life because 9% for one gem is really cracked. Now the only way to get other stats like willpower, strength, dex, uh, it's only through the gems. As you can see, like green, for example, gives dexterity in armor, but I just like max HP. Why I'm talking about these stats on the body piece with uh, dexterity stuff like that is to reach rare notes in Paragon board. Jewelry, I just pick diamonds because uh, we do, I don't really know uh, what kind of resistance items I will get during leveling, so... It all depends. You always want to reach the cap for resistances, which is 75%. Especially World Tier 4. So that's what's up. The Pregnant board here. Starter board. We go with Warrior node to increase the damage for our Warriors. Armor here. Not really necessary. Because the cap for armor in Season 4 is 9,230 or 60. I'm not sure now. Once you reach that number, even in Pit, in pit Tier 200, it doesn't matter. 9200 that's the cap your journey ends there so minions will scale 100 percent from your armor so anything extra is wasted right so this is mainly for the damage go extra dexterity notes uh second board we go with cult leader and dead razor glyph i'm a big fan of this one because 15 percent damage increase on the targets it's really good taken damage taken excuse me and of course, this one is buffing the Paragon nodes that support their minions. That's why we put it here 100%. So all these are going to be uh, buffed by 100%, right? For, for the minion damage and then for the damage reduction. So they're going to be a lot of uh, really tanky. I went with the extra nodes here for damage for warriors. Going through the middle for attack speed and uh, general minion damage. Even pick these, uh, these uh, magic nodes. And then up top, mage nodes. For damage while going down here for cult leader the strongest legendary node for uh, necromancer third board is flesh eater with mage i also go for this one because blood miss uh, with blood miss we will not have a problem uh, to have this uptime it's gonna be a 40 percent multiplier damage is really good your pets are gonna scale from that as well so yeah minions that's why i picked it the third glyph is going to be mage so stacking up uh, this damage to mages on top of uh, all these here is going to be really good. They're going to do some nice damage. And you want to max every intelligence in here. 75 intelligence for mages is really cracked. And yeah. Next up we got Hulking Monstrosity with control. Once again your cult mages will apply the CC and that will trigger this glyph right here. In this board... It is 140% damage increase to CC targets, so that's that's a, that's a huge multiplier, right? Excuse me, not the multiplier, it's an additive. You can see the plus there. I also went for all nodes here for Golem, attack speed and damage. Uh, it's very high percent, very high number. Stacks really well with the Glyph, I'll show you later. And also the Legendary here, Golem gets a multiplier, max HP and damage. This is just, this is just insane. I'm, I'm shocked what Necromancer has, man, it's really crazy. Also, I really like one thing about boards for Necromancer. Everything is on the way for mid-maxing. Like, look at see here, right? We don't, like, strafe away for extra wasted uh, points. It's all on the way, right? Uh, kind of same here, right, for main stats. These are extra too, but it's it's not that bad. It's actually pretty okay. Then up top on the way, we pick some more damage and max HP for the Golem. You can see the problem is to hit willpower for a requirement. So you could probably put like one willpower gem in the armor or two if you think it's worth it. But I think max HP is going to be better. Since max HP, you cannot get it on armor anymore from affixes before you could get it on rings. But you can no longer get it. You can only get it on unique ring Mendel. So having max HP for uh, your, uh, yourself, which will basically scale for your minions, is going to be really good. And the last board here, we go with Ascent of Death with a Golem Glyph in it. So I also make this one out 
54 willpower, I think it's a pretty good number. Uh, good damage increase overall for the golem. And we go some extra notes here. You wanna like the way for willpower. Pick some on the side for crit damage and damage to both enemies. Our crit is going to be pretty good, I think, especially for minions, because of this passive. It's really it's really sick. And I also picked the legendary node here, which is either damage reduction or damage increase. So either way, it's still going to be great, right? Uh, I think it's going to be, well, I'm, I'm not sure. But we'll see how, the, how, it, how it acts, how it is. Uh, I think the DR should be active almost some more, more times than the damage increase, which will be fine because, I mean, in pit, I'm pretty sure we're going to need all that. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Once again, your rotation. You always need to have your skill, the priest, from this one active. So that's every 8 seconds you need to press this ability. It's amazing. A buff for your minions. Uh, really crazy. And then try to spam also Blood Mist as much as possible to proc Blood Orbs in here. To uh, to have cooldown reduction for ultimate. So always try to use Blood Mist after you use ultimate here. And then just spam your uh, life with Sever. Spam your life away with Sever that procs Blight from this from this aspect. I'm pretty sure I'll be rocking this build ASAP. I will try to min-max it for endgame as well. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. I will also make a Sorcerer build. I will work on that today before the season releases. And I also have Barbarian, which you can, shoot, uh, which you, which you can check right up top uh, in the corner. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. I wish you good luck with the season. Until then, have a good one and peace.